Hello, welcome back to the channel, or to the channel if you've not been here before. Um, this is what we're doing today. This is, um, we, well, we're going to resolve the issue. I'll try to resolve the issue for free of, um, of a sloppy knob. Now, sloppy knob, not always a bad thing. This situation, it's not brilliant. So, if you look at this here, we've got a load of play in this shitter. So we're going to try and rectify this for free. And I've, well, I mean, I've done something similar on my BMW in another video, but I actually bought parts for that, which, I mean, I don't, I'm, a, I'm allergic to spending money if I don't have to. So I'm going to try and do this one for free. So anyway, like you can see, so if you go to first gear, then second gear, it's like, bleh, bleh. But there we go. So this is going to be a video featuring a lot of my knob. So before we come an internet internet sensation, let's crack on and get it off. First thing we need to do is, if you notice this here, it's already a bit broken. But this, this should pull out. Should pull out. Should clip out. Yeah, there we go. Now, yours might not be like that, but that's just a design feature of my car. Right, so there is our selector. If you see, there's loads of play in the ball bag. And, well, that's the main play, really. So we're going to try and do something with that. So let's take this off. To unscrew the knob, you just unscrew the knob. keep on turning until it comes off <clears throat> and then we need to take this off because I'm going to do this inside because it'd be easier so let's go and get some tools so I haven't actually checked to see what I've got to take off to take this off yet so I'm just doing it as a go but first thing I can see is this 10 milli here so I'm going to take that out and then hopefully the centre console will lift out which wouldn't surprise me on this car because everything is nice and easy to work on. So I'll just toss this ratchet off for a minute. Nearly there. Do you know how long is this bolt? Check that out. And this, yeah, I thought it might do, but it just pulls off. And there we can see our gear selectoring tins. So, I mean, this moves around a bit, not really bothered about that. But we need to disconnect the cables, which one's there. Pull that out. Put it in a safe place. I'm going to turn my light on so we can see. Better. So that's one cable. And the other one, you can't actually see. Somewhere there. You know what? I'm going to unbolt the unit from the floor because I can't bother going out, getting out of the car and walking around to the side. So, more 10 mils. So that's 10. No, 12 mils. Is it? Tight twelve mils. Right, I'm gonna I'm just gonna undo them and take that off. Right, so scrap that idea because them bolts feel like they're gonna snap and it's just not worth it. I'm struggling here instead. Now this is one method that you can do this with, and this is the old cable tie trick. And what you do is you basically feed bits of cable tie into the ball and it does work but and, and you know what i wouldn't say it's not a permanent fix because they do usually stay in but that's not what i'm going to do i'm going to do a, a professional fix 
and for the ball now what i have seen done is a six milli bolt drill and tapped pushed into the to squash this but i am going to try this method and i'll see if this works let me just swap hands right so my plan is to force a couple of self tappers fat self tappers into here doing the same thing it's already getting better and i'm going to put more than that in now this is by all accounts a bodge but i am using stainless steel screws so it's a good bodge If you hear it starting to crack, it's probably a good time to stop. Look at that. Still needs more. We'll just randomly place them around the situation until it feels better. Now we've got a problem there because one of them is in the way so we need to make sure they're not in the way of anything so anyway i'm gonna do that because well as you can see i've just thrown them in for now just to see if it's working but i'm not going to leave them there i'm going to move them about a bit probably make them shorter as well but yeah i'll do that now right so i've cut the screws down and now they should wind all the way in without sticking out and failing the gear stick but before we do that this I'm going to give a bit of a lubrication. Um, now this is just actually, this is motorcycle chain lube. But it's good, good shit actually. Because it gets into all the cran up nuts and crannies. And then the propellant evaporates away and then goes greasy. So you can grease stuff up like that without taking it apart. It's not as good as proper grease to do it with, but it's better than nothing. And it's all I can be bothered doing. So anyway, let's put these screws in. And I'm just going to put them, I think, every quarter there four of them opposite each other so the 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 so let's screw them in and then i will come back when i've done that so after a little bit of experiment and i've worked to put the screws i come up with this neat pattern very uniformed nice pattern there you see so now nice and tight but the other thing that i'm going to address i'll try to address i don't know if you've noticed there's a screw sticking out there this bush, this bush here, there's also movement in that, quite a lot of movement in that. So, basically the same thing. So if I screw a couple of screws into that, then it's gonna make that tighter. Well, hopefully. So let's give that, let's have a bash of that too. So, nice quick fix. Three screws in there, a screw in there, and, wait for the results much more positive gear change now there's still a bit of play in this bus but to take all that apart will be more effort than i'm willing to put in at the moment and there is movement on the full cradle because there's bushes underneath these which are rubber but i'm not risking snapping them bolts off to sort that out so anyway get a couple of screws in there and we can get all gears well, we can't get all gears i've already done it and not a lot of play in it so let's throw the shitter back together so the first thing to go back on is the last thing that we took off which is this now it's got like holes there which you've got to line up so get it underneath the handbrake first because so once you've got it down there it just sort of slides into place it slots into place nice and beautifully so we put that back and then we'll put our bolt back in which is somewhere over here because that's where i put it there it is
Right, screw that in. So that's back in. Now we'll put this Johnny back on. Which has four little doofus to clip in. I think mine's only got three because I think one's fucked off. Yeah, probably. But let's, uh, that just pushes in as well when you line it up. Put our knob back on. And then, tidy all that shit up and we'll do a test drive. Oh, the eight's not lined up. No. Compare the before and after. I mean, that's flexing, not so much play like it was before. So now we can change gear nice and smoothly. Beautiful. I'd also like to add that if you do use this method, I mean, I took all this off because I was planning on taking the actual cradle out, but if you do use this method, then you don't actually need to. You can just pull this foreskin back and throw a couple of screws in it. So anyway, that's worked quite well. So I know, like, that's my coach, we've got nice positive feel to the gears and we can actually tell what gear we're in. So that's nice. Um, and that's all, that's all I'm doing today. Uh, just a short video. Um, and that's it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, all that shit, whatever else. And I'll see you next time.